Today is going to be, um, I'm going to need you to use your imagination a little bit. Can you do that? Get it warmed up. I need you to clear your minds a little bit. I'm going to be describing some things. And as I describe them, I want you to go through and, and uh, kind of try to picture them in your mind. Okay. So all of you have good minds, right? Now, when I invite you to close your eyes and, and to think about something, that is not a license to go to sleep. <laughs> I want to first sort of give you a description of, of two, two different guys, both of them 22 years old, if they were to come in the back of the church. One of them would be dressed in a nice suit. He'd have a nice tie. He'd have a $35 haircut. He would look good. I don't know. I'm mind free. But he would look good and, and, and very, very charming. And he would come and shake hands with everybody. Introduce himself. And the second one would come in with jeans that have more holes than pockets. In them. And, and maybe his shirt would be a little stained. His hair might be a little long. Might have a beard. Tattoos. Now, I'm picturing those two guys. You might say, well, the first guy who looked good might be somebody I'd want to introduce to a friend or to my daughter or to my sister. That looks like a, a good guy, right? And the second guy that came along, you might, what, be like, hmm, I'm not really sure about him. He looks a little, what, shady maybe? Looks like he might be down on his luck. He looks like, I'm just not real sure. I mean, we know you don't dress that way to go to church anyway. He shouldn't be in here dressed like that. That's disrespectful, right? And on both of those people, you'd be doing what? Judging. You'd be judging. You'd be judging them on their appearance. But come to find out, the guy who came in in his suit, he has a good job. He lives in a he has a he has a live-in girlfriend that he verbally abuses on a daily basis. He's an atheist. This is the first time he's been in church in his whole life. Has your opinion changed of him any? Is he the clean cut guy that you first saw with that outward appearance? <coughs> or is he different? You're you're your evaluation of him may have changed a little bit, right? He's not what you saw, right? Because we judge this, but God judges this, right? He judges what's inside of us. And the other young man is, is uh, a devout Christian. He goes to church every Sunday. He wants to be a missionary. He loves people. As a matter of fact, he goes out and does volunteer work to feed the homeless every week. Has your opinion changed any on him? <laughs> He's not what he what? Appears to be. And, and as we go through life, we have a tendency to judge people, don't we? Anybody here ever judge somebody? Yes? Yep. Any of you been judged? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I hate being judged. I can't, I can't speak for you. Maybe you like it. I don't know. But I, I hate... Sorry. I hate to be judged. I hate when people... For whatever reason, look at me and, and judge me, and they don't even what? They don't even know me. You know? We, uh, uh, I hate judging so much. I, this is my favorite Christmas shirt. All right? I wasn't going to wear it, but I thought you might judge me. So, um, <laughs> but, can you read it? It says, Hey, Santa, stop, stop judging. judging me. Right? That's my, uh, this person that looks small. <laughs> Stop judging. <laughs> oh my goodness. The <laughs> appearances aren't everything. I'm really skinny under this suit. <laughs> I just put this on so y'all won't feel bad. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's uh, when we go to uh, to prison or we're going to Emmaus. Different people give talks. They, uh, and they give talks to practice what they're going to say because a lot of times it's the first thing, time they've ever spoke or it's the first time 
that they ever spoke on that topic, and the rest of the group kind of critiques them. You know, they say, well, you did this, I really like this story, I really like this, or I didn't like that. And, and I let, when I do mine, I go ahead and let people know most of the time that I don't like to be criticized. So when you're sitting there and you're about to tell me something, no, I don't like to be criticized. I just say what God lays on my heart. And if you don't like it, then you need to take it up with Him. Right? And that cuts down on a lot of my criticism right there. Because they don't mind criticizing me, but they don't want to criticize God, right? But we, we, all, we all hate to be judged. And, and, and I think it's a, um, that somehow, as much as we hate to be judged, that if we're honest, we judge people. We look at somebody and, and we kind of get in our minds who they are and what they are, don't we? And, and the truth of the matter is, is that if you're doing that, I want to go ahead and tell you, you, you don't have a right to judge them. You don't have a right to judge them because you don't know them. You may know what they're wearing. Or like their cologne or not. You may like their singing or not, but you don't know them. Quit judging them. That's not your place. That's not what you're called to do. Now, but if you feel like I just got to judge somebody because that's what I do, and if I don't judge somebody, I'm not going to have anything to do. Next time the girls or, or guys get together, I won't have anything to gossip about if I don't get something, right? Well, if you've got to talk about somebody, let me give you a couple of hints. First off, you need to know the facts. Okay? Don't just assume because of what they're wearing that they're this way or that way. Right? You need to know all the facts. You need to know them. Because if you don't know them, then don't judge them. Don't judge them. You know, there was a, excuse me, a pastor from Houston. His name was Jim, Jerry Simmons. And he was telling that he and his family had gone to a football game. And they left, and it was about a four-hour drive home. And as he was pulling out of his parking lot, somebody came up and hit him in the front. And there uh, wasn't much damage. You know, they exchanged information, and he went on his way. And, you know, he lived out in the country, and there was a lot of windy roads, kind of like here, you know, but it was definitely a two-lane highway, right, all the way. And as it started to get dark, he realized he didn't have any lights. That when that person had hit him, it had jarred the, the electrical system. He didn't have any lights, but he did have bright lights. So he had to drive all the way home with his bright lights. Now, how many of you have ever countered somebody with their bright lights on on a dark road? And, and what does it do? Blind. And it makes you so happy. <laughs> Doesn't it? It just brings joy to your heart when there's, those lights are shining on you. And, and, and so you can imagine the reactions that he got. He said they honked the horn. He said that some of them blinked their lights, you know, to let him know. Some of them just locked their lights on, like, hmm, have that. And some of them told him that he was number one. I mean, they had all kinds of stuff going on there. And, and he said, you know, if they had known what was going on, maybe it would have been a different reaction. Right? If they had known that his only other option was to cut the lights off, which would have been very bad if you've ever been out in the dark and not had lights. And so, and he, he said that God laid it on his heart that, that we have a lot of people in church like that. They have the lights, the bright lights blocked on, and we see them, and they might be doing something that we don't like, and we judge them, right? Because they're different. They dress different, they talk different. And, and he said, that's just not right. And then he said, that, you know, there's other people out there in the world that we're going to encounter who have their bright lights on, and we don't know what's going on with them, but yet we judge them, right? And we react to them in a certain way because we don't understand what's going on because if we did understand what's going on, we wouldn't what? We wouldn't judge them, right? Our perspective would, would definitely change. There was another, uh, there was Father, excuse me, Father Michael uh, <coughs> Villani, I think yeah, Blimey. And he was a speaker, and he had a great reputation to go around. He drove several hours to, to talk to this group of students. And as he got up to talk, the crowd was kind of 
rowdy, kind of like y'all get, you know. Yeah. It was kind of, kind of rowdy, and, and he he uh, he was trying to, to talk, and he was trying to speak, and some people were still out in the audience um, making noise and stuff. He said he noticed this one girl that was towards the back, and she just was going to it. You know, he was t talking, and every time he would talk, she would just, and he really just got fed up with it. And he, and he called her out. And he said, young lady, he said, you know, I drove, drove a long way up at my own expense. He said, you know, the least you could do would be to turn around and face me and listen to what I have to say. And you know, the young lady turned around. She had a tear in her eye. She was humiliated from having been called out like most of us would be. And she said, Father, these are our deaf students. So whatever you're... Whatever you say to them, I'm signing to them. So I'm sorry that it looked like I was being disrespectful, but I really wasn't. Game changer, huh? You know, sometimes we see things and we think we can make a judgment, but the truth is we don't know them. You don't judge them. You don't know them, right? Came across another story as I was preparing this, and it's about a man. Uh, I mean, it's about a, a train, a subway train, and they were going. The car was about half empty, and, and there were people reading their paper. If you ever been on a train or a subway train, you would know people just sit around and entertain themselves. So they were doing their thing, and everybody was kind of keeping to themselves. And at the next stop, uh, a man and a few children came in, and, and the man just sat down, and the children started running up and down the car, right? And they were they were being loud. It looked like a zoo had been empty. You know, you, you ever been somewhere where somebody just releases their children? You know, be free, run. You know, but 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 they ran and they were being disruptive and people couldn't concentrate and they were kept looking at him like, "Aren't you going to do something? Aren't you going to do something?" He didn't say anything and the man just sat there and he stared stared into and across the across the uh, aisle there and, and and the the people were just like, "Dude." Get your children under control is what they were thinking. They weren't saying anything. And finally, a lady had had enough. And she said, Sir, you might want to consider getting your children under control. They're kind of disturbing those around them. And the man broke his stare and he, he sat up and he said, Yeah, yeah, I should. You're right. I, I should. He said, we just came from the hospital and my wife died. He said, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to handle it. And I guess they don't know what to do either. Game changer. If you knew him, would you have judged him? Or how would you have judged him? You don't know him. Don't judge him. You get the point? get the point how we look at situations and sometimes they're just not what we think. Sometimes we think better of a person and they're not really a good person inside. And sometimes we think badly of somebody and they're really a good person. We're really not fit to be judges, but if we have to judge them, we ought to take the time to get to know somebody. Right? You know, that's, that's, that's what the world needs is people who will take time to care enough to to get to know somebody, right? To take time to sit down with a stranger or sit down with a friend who's, in, who's, who's just off right now. Something seems to be wrong and say, hey, what's going on? What's going on? I can tell there's something wrong. I can tell you're troubled. Can I help you with those children? Is there something I can do? You know, if we're going to judge people, we should get to know them. Should we? You know, but there, there was an article that, 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 I, um, that I read, and it was talking about, you know, that a lot of our judgment comes from broken relationships or lack of relationships. That, that as a society, we have moved away from relationships and have moved into a us versus them ideology. Now, I'm not asking for you to raise hands. I just want I just want to ask you something. Do you feel like you're part of that? 
to reflect on that. Because I would bet if you actually reviewed it, you, you, you would think, yeah, I guess I am. You know who's really good at dividing us up? The media. They are. They're, they're, they're like pros. Like, I mean, they, they manipulate people like you wouldn't believe. You know, they, they, they put mindsets into our thought. That this is what a person is. Or this is what another person is. And, and they label them and they put them into groups. Let me, let me give you some examples. Let me give you some examples. Close your eyes. I want you to imagine each of these people I'm, I'm, I'm about to give you, okay? Just let it clear your mind. Um, you know, let it let get your mind clear. And I want you to picture each of, somebody from each of these groups that I'm going to mention. A conservative. A liberal. An illegal immigrant. A biker. Someone who's covered with tattoos. All right, you can open your eyes if you're not asleep. The, um, now, did you picture something in your mind? Did, did something come to your mind? Were you able to picture somebody in all those groups? So you have some kind of like generalization, right? And, and what I want to ask you, let's take the biker. Let's take, let's take a biker. Let's just go into that a little bit. Now, in your mind, what does a biker look like? Which biker? <laughs> Good question. Let's say, let's say, uh, what, what's somebody, tell me what your picture. Somebody tell me what that picture. Huh? I picture a guy in tight pants. Huh? Tight, tight pants, or they leather? Yeah, so not, not a biker, but a biker. No, oh, the other kind of biker, yeah. like a bicycle biker. I mean a motorcycle biker. No. Uh, not my, that's on me, that's on me. No, <laughs> but that's on me. But a motorcycle biker, what, what's your picture of one? Tattoos? They got tattoos? Long hair, leather jacket. Long hair, leather jacket. A big chain on the belt. Chain on the belt. Holds what? A wallet? A wallet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they going to have any weapons on them? Well, hey. Earrings. That's good. Earrings. What else? Tattoos. Tattoos. Beards. Maybe. Uh -huh. Right. Nice guys. <laughs> No, no, no nice guys. Good looking girl on the back. Good looking girl on the back. Yeah. Okay, so we got a picture. We got a picture. Right. Now, My son is one and he's none of that. That's right. It's a Christian bike club. It's a Christian bike club. So there's bikers. There's bikers who are dressed and, and look at just exactly as you said, but there's bikers who dress differently who are Christian bike club. There are people who are dentists who ride bikes. It has nothing to do with being in a gang. But that's what we pictured, right? Not the yeah. clean not a clean cut guy. Just likes to get out on the weekend and ride a bike. Right, Dave? Nobody thought about that, did you? Because when, when when you say biker, you something's been instilled in your mind that that's what they are. A biker is a is a they're rough. They're mean, aren't they? They're tough. You know, but we don't think about the other type of biker. Maybe it's just a dentist out for a ride. You know? You don't know, and you don't know what kind of people they are. I know people who dress tough and aren't tough. Or not what they present themselves to be. They like to strap on that leather, you know, and, and ride. You know, there are police officers ride bikes. Anybody think of a police officer riding a bike? No. They all ride bikes. I just said somebody who rides a bike. I mean, bicycle, but my fault, my fault, I'm, my fault, I'm taking the way But do you see what I'm saying? It's been drilled into our mind. This is what that person is, right? This is what, he's the character that, that's in the movies, right? It, it, you know, those motorcycle gangs are always the, the bad guys, and they, you know, they rough people up, and, and they, you know, just bad things. So the word, motorcycle rider, Immediately brings something into our minds, right? 
But it could, nothing could be farther from the truth at times. Now, I'm not saying nobody's like that, but not everybody's like that. Right? You can't take people and say, you're a conservative, and so you're in this box. No, not everybody fits in that box who's a conservative. And you can't say you're a liberal, and you fit in this box. Because no, not every liberal fits in that box. They have their own thoughts. They may share some common things, but thoughts, but, but I can't say, I can't, if you say, what does a liberal look like? I'd be like, I don't know. What's a conservative look like? No idea. Right? <laughs> you don't know I'm describing for <laughs> But 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 you know we can't judge by that. We can't judge by those outward appearances, and that's what the scriptures tell us. That God doesn't judge by that, He judges by what's in here. There is a story of a of a, of a bar that had a it was close to a, a motorcycle rally. There was gonna be a motorcycle rally, and people were in there and doing whatever you do in a club and but the, uh, um, all of a sudden you could hear the rumble of the bikes pulling up. And it was, it was a group of guys that kind of dressed like what you described. And they come into the bar. I always picture that, that saloon scene, right? Come into the bar. And, and as they come into the bar, there was just a hush over the place. It's like, wow. I don't want to say anything to make these guys mad. They look, they look pretty tough, you know? I'm just sitting here for a good time. I don't know what their intentions are. But as, as they came in, the first guy that came through the door went up to the bar and said, where's your phone? I need to use it. And, and he said, he says, right down there at the end of the bar. So he went down there and he picked up. And it was just like a quiet because people are, people are uncomfortable in those situations. So there's kind of a, a quiet around the room. And, and he picked up the phone and, and you could hear everything he said. He said, Mom, I just want to let you know I'll be a little bit late tonight. <laughs> Do you think anybody in that bar expected that to be the words out of his mouth? No. Mom, I'm going to be a little late tonight. You see, we can't judge people by their appearance, right? We need to find out what's in here. We need to take the time to find out why they're in that situation. You know, people don't care about what you know until they know you care about them. They don't. If you want to share the gospel, you need to find out what their needs are and meet their needs. You need to go with where they're at and say, what's going on? I can see you're having a bad day. You want to talk about it? You want to discuss it? Is there something I can do? Is there a way I can help? You see, that's what we're encouraged to do. You know, we're not encouraged to sit at a desk and say, look at her, slamming that, throwing that stuff around. Man, I'm glad I'm not them. She's probably unhappy about her hair, dude. Because look at that thing. You know? That's not what we're called to do. What we're called to do is go over there and find out what's going on. Can I help you? Something I can do for you? That's one unless you know I'm available if you need to talk to somebody. I'll be glad to talk to you. I know we haven't been friends before. I don't, you don't know me and I don't know you, but I do know it looks like maybe you need some help today. What a different world that would be, wouldn't it? Amen. Huh? Wouldn't, it wouldn't it be different? You know? Did, did, when Jesus met the lepers, he said, man, y'all, y'all ain't looking good. You need to stay over there. Or did he go and heal did he go where they were, meet them where they were, and heal them? Now you, I'm not saying you're supposed to go out there and try to heal people. But I am saying you can heal them in a different way. Because sometimes they have things inside that need to be fixed, and you can be the fixer. You can be the one that fill, helps fill that void. You can be the one that introduces them to Christ just by being the hands and feet of Christ. You don't need to preach a sermon to them. You just need to love them. You know, the one thing I can tell you today that I want you to take out of here, you can write this down or you just say it over and over and over again, is I can't judge them. I don't know them. I can't judge them. I don't know them. I 
I can't judge them. I don't even know them. And if we live by that, what a different world it would be. Catch yourself this week and see how many times you're judging somebody. Every time you come into a room or are driving down the highway or getting groceries, stop and think. Every time you do that, say, oh, I can't judge them. <laughs> I don't even know. The world will be a different place. We'll be different people. We'll react differently to people if we take time to stop judging. Don't judge love. Don't judge love. The challenge is yours. The message is for you. If you don't like what I'm saying, take it up. <laughs> I, <get it. laughs> I never preach a sermon I don't need to hear. God taught me that a long time ago. So when I see you going to sleep in here, I don't judge you. <laughs> you might need rest. And that's okay. That's okay. I still love you. You're awake or you're asleep. As long as you don't snore. You snore and you're not awake. So as well as we go out into the world this week, and all and all honestly, think I can't judge them because I don't know. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.